Excuse me, Mayor Mirabot, I don't think your microphone's on. Some people outside of the room can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our town council workshop. It's an exciting night. It, uh, I'd say it's a, a new milestone, uh, almost a first, but it's not really. It's uh, one of the many uh, steps that we're taking on the way to a, a greater place. So today is Wednesday, March 15th, 2023. Welcome to our workshop. Uh, if you could please take roll. Councilmember Ramirez? Here. Councilmember Lord? Here. Councilmember Duncan? Here. Vice Mayor Callahan? Here. Mayor Marabont? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. If you could all please rise to me and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hmm. All right, just for a real quick recap, um, you know, this is, as I said, it's one of many steps. Uh, the first uh, was when the uh, Town Council um, acquired this land, the 16 acres in the middle of the heart of Cutler Bay with a vision to make a great place for it. We went out in front of our residents and asked them to vote on whether they wanted to uh, bring forward an, an obligation bond to go ahead and fund the development of this product um, project. And it was um, a strong majority voted to go forward with this. And since then, I guess it's been approximately a year uh, as we started to you know, go through the steps. Number one is looking for a qualified firm um so and then we'll, we'll, we'll explain the rest of the steps as we go forward so ralph i'm gonna go ahead and let you uh walk us through this and uh and i'll first turn it over to mitch i guess for an opening statement so mitch sure i'm just going to speak very briefly um to tell you a comment about this process ordinarily when you have a selection of design design build almost any of the procurements that you do um Ralph, your manager, assembles um, a selection committee to evaluate the proposals, and then they bring you a recommendation. This is of such importance and, and centrality to the town's identity that Ralph felt that it was better for you to serve as your own selection committee and to make this recommendation to yourself, essentially. So the process includes reviewing the written proposals evaluating them based on the criteria that are in, that is in the RFP, and then hearing live presentations from the shortlisted proposers so that you can further evaluate them and ask them questions if you have any questions. Ralph and I spoke before we got here, and it's his desire that you hear the, the presentations, you further consider the criteria and that you rank the proposers between now and your next meeting, which is a week from tonight. And that the uh, final selection and evaluation will be made at that meeting. Now, just as in the case where you receive a recommendation from a panel of staff, they've done evaluations and done numerical rankings, and they make a recommendation to you, which you then discuss and you're free to accept the recommendation as is, or to, um, you know, reevaluate the the proposals yourself on the dais, and you'll be free to do that at next week's meeting. Uh, so tonight, you you should listen. You should carefully ask questions. I believe there's 20 minutes for each proposer to make their initial proposal. 10 minutes after that for you to ask them questions. I understand, Mayor, that your practice is to adhere strictly to timelines. Um, and so the proposers are forewarned that the 20 minutes means 19 minutes and 59 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and that um, some we were asked whether we can um, exclude proposers from hearing each other's proposal. We can't do that. This is a public meeting and this public meeting is is being webcast, in fact. Uh, so the entire public is permitted, but nothing prevents the proposers from uh, affording each other professional courtesy of absenting themselves while their colleagues are presenting. It's up to them. Okay. All right, thank you very much. 
Oh, uh, yes. Um, you are recognized. Thank you very much. Uh, just to be uh, fully transparent, in my day job outside of Cutler Bay, I work at Florida International University, and I've been advised by the attorney to disclose that I have worked professionally with one of the firms here at Florida International University, which is MC Harry. I've also been advised that there is not an ethical conflict, so I just wanted to disclose that publicly now and, and let everybody be aware of that. Thank you very much. But I, I, I take it you're saying that will not uh, in any way affect All right, Ralph, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. And and you're right, Mayor, this is a big historic moment. You know, we were all involved in those 23 meetings, you know, in the parks underneath the tent and going to HOA meetings. So it's a very exciting time. I also want to take this opportunity to congratulate all three shortlisted firms. They're very qualified firms. That's why they're here. So congratulations to, to everyone. Um, Mayor, members of council, as you know, this is such an important project that we... Um, um, hired Stantec, Ramon Costella, and Emma Jones that are here in, in, in the audience as well um, for to be our owner's rep. That is, this is a big heavy lift, uh, and we've had a, a great uh, uh, relationship with Stantec and also with you know, our, our town attorney's office. You know, endless meetings, you know, developing the RFP, original RFQ, the RFP, and all the addendums. So, with that, Mayor, members of council, I would like to have, bring up uh, Miss Emma Jones, who's going to provide us just a, a, a brief history of our journey, what led us here. So, Emma? Oh, there we go. Sorry. Um, good evening. My name is Emma Jones with Stantec. Um, as, you know, everyone has said, this has been a, a definitely a, a very um, well thought through process because of the magnitude of you know what you guys are doing and it's such a special project especially um, to the the town of Cutler Bay so I'm just going to give a quick recap of you know how the process has gone thus far and then next steps post this meeting um, <clears throat> so as we all know January 10th the RFQ responses were due then on the 25th uh, the selection committee met and reviewed those um, proposals there were nine that were um, uh, <laughs> provided. Um, after that meeting, the top three firms were selected based on the scores. Um, at the beginning of that meeting, five firms were eliminated prior to the scoring due to non-compliance with the RFQ. The shortlisted firms were then notified and provided with the RFP package on January 27th. Following that, Addendum 1 was released on February 6th. Then Addendum 2 was released on March 1st. Again, just clarifying the RFP and <clears throat> different um, requests within it. March 10th, the RFP proposals were due. It is now March 15th. Um, you've all had a, an opportunity to read those proposals. And um, so now between the oral presentations that are going to occur today, as previously mentioned, 20 minutes per firm with a 10-minute Q&A um, post the end of the uh, oral presentation. Um, and then between this week and then the 22nd, today and the 22nd, um, you will then have the time to evaluate the firms based on the RFP proposal and their oral presentations um, from today. So <clears throat> you will be given a scorecard to evaluate the firms on. And um, that was provided to everybody in addendum two, but I'll go ahead and refresh everybody's memory. Um, the project approach will be given 10 points, and that includes how a firm manages project organization, schedule, budget, design, public relations, and um, public feedback. The design concept will be given um, 50 points of rate of weight in this process, and that is um, based on the explanation of the approach planned for this project, along with the design concept and project schedule. And then the interview or oral presentation that we're going to hear tonight from each firm is has a 40-point weight, um, and all of those total 100. Um, <clears throat> post... Um, you know, the oral presentations, and again, you guys get an, an additional week to review everything. Um, during that March 22nd um, meeting, the score scorecards will be discussed. And as was previously mentioned, um, you will then be able to deliberate and discuss, um, you know, the different um, 
scoring and, and whether or not there are different uh, differences of opinion. Um, once that is decided and the final or the top rank firm has been decided, um, that firm must provide no later than March 23rd, the next day at 2 p.m., um, a complete fee proposal. And then obviously discussions on a uh, contract would move forward then. If um, that firm is unable to comply with the timeline, the town uh, will move to the ne next highest ranked firm. Keep the process moving. Any questions? Council, we have questions. Ralph, I uh, just want to clarify um, again. So we're evaluating design concepts. Uh, just, just don't want to make sure that people are aware that these are not final designs. Um, the, going forward, there is still some opportunity for, I guess, uh, adjustments to any design presented. Is that correct? Correct, Mayor. Um, the All the firms were provided the over 900 comments that we received throughout our 23 workshops, as well as the conceptual plans that were performed by the University of Miami and their comments as well. So uh, all the firms have everything that we have. And and you're right. Um, it If the councils will, if there's some items that need to be moved around or what have you, that that's, you know, we're not voting on the concept where you want to make sure the only, you know, it's 50% right. points on the concept. So, so obviously um, the, the firm's tasks were to try to capture all those comments and, and put them on a, a single concept. And I know that each one of the firms have a PowerPoint presentation they're going to go through. Uh, the council also has that PowerPoint presentation as a hard copy as well to take home. Um, so you're absolutely right, Merit. If it's our will, if there's something that needs to be moved around, shift around or whatever, that's a conversation we could have. Thank you very much. Anything else to add? No, I think, I think also to add to Emma and what we talked about earlier with, with our town attorney is that you're not going to be in it alone. Okay. So, so tonight you're going to get the presentation. If there's any questions, individual council members, you know, have, please use the town attorney, myself and, and Emma for those type of questions. Certainly you can't talk to each other about it, but this is the sunshine meeting. So I wanted to make sure that, that you're not alone. So if there's any questions, we're here, the professional staff's here for you. Okay. And I just want to remind the public again, um, we're not really voting on anything tonight. We are going to be completing some evaluation forms, which are not actually due tonight uh, as for our own use. Um, we will be voting on this next week. Um, there will be no public comments tonight as well, but there will, you know, we'll have ample opportunity at our, at our regular council meeting for com public comments to be made. Um, so just want to make sure that our, the public knows that we're being on being transparent. Uh, some people are concerned about the start time at five o'clock, but I want to remind everybody that this is being recorded and it can be watched at your leisure going forward before uh, the actual voting on this takes place and when comments can be made. And, and members council also add, um, we will also be um, rebroadcasting this meeting uh, tomorrow, you know, on our, on our YouTube and Facebook pages. I think we have Rod Gibbs, our communication managers back there. So you might see him take some photos, but, uh, again, residents have the opportunity right now to watch it Facebook live zoom in. And in case they miss it, we will, we broadcast it tomorrow. So All thank right. you, Mayor. That concludes everything. All right. Very good. Then I guess we'll go ahead and get to our first presentation. Are we ready for that? Uh, yeah, Mayor, members of council, we, we have, we just listed an alphabetical order. Okay. So if we could have our, our friends from BNA Partners come up and then Mayor, once they get set up, um, the clerk will start the clock. Yes, I just want to, I just want to test it. Once he puts up, I want to test it before we start. Okay. You know, technology always works, right? Never have any failures. So. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, sir. He says this slide presentation can be up there. Okay, very good. Yes. All right. You want to just test that, make sure it goes forward? There you go. Well, he has to put it in presentation mode. Okay. Yeah. And I think he has to make sure he's sharing it so that the public can see it. Yeah. Um, COVID changed the way we do business, right? Mm -hmm. So, just want to make sure. Okay. Very good. To the right, the arrow to the right. Yeah. So, I'm going to go back. Yeah, no, the arrow to the right. 
Okay. All right. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Mr. Manager. My name is Agustin Barrera. I'm a partner with the firm of Romeo and Medium Partners, and I'll be the principal in charge of this project. The org chart for our team uh, highlights our key members for each discipline. These are experts in their own field. Many of them are here with me today. They will be participating in the presentations, and the ones that don't will be available during the QA QC. Our team of specialty consultants was specially selected based on the requirements of the solicitation. We have, with the majority of these consultants, successfully in other projects. Our presentation was uh, geared towards the three key elements that were presented in the RFP, team expertise, design solutions, and proven ability. Bermuda Hamidian Partners is recognized uh, regionally for its design excellence in parks and community centers. Our partners, design partner in public safety, DLR, is national leader and award-winning designer for public safety buildings, and EXP is a nationally recognized for their expertise in resiliency and sustainability. As you will see throughout our presentation, our design solution aligns with the town's green master plan. We will demonstrate how it how it, the effective program and planning sustainable design meet those criteria. Lastly, we are a locally based team of more than 120. Per Bermeo Hammond Partners is locally based with more than 120 design professionals. We have experience working with the majority, if not all, uh, permitting agencies. We have intimate knowledge of the market, and this experience has allowed us to deliver projects successfully on time and on budget for our clients. Randy Hollingworth, our Director of Planning and Landscape Architecture, will continue with the presentation. Thank you, Augustine. Uh, this is the site. It, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for the community. Uh, I think we've worked very hard developing a plan that's uniquely Cuthbert Bay. And I, I, the, the effort we've put in to make sure that this meets many of your needs, I think is, um, will be shown in the actual uh, plan that we're gonna show you. And this is the master plan here. Uh, we've really focused on an environmental approach, uh, a concept of developing a site that takes the buildings and minimizes their footprint and maximizes the legacy park project. Uh, so this is really a series of buildings set in a park. Uh, we were very concerned about the idea of how you access this park and the buildings themselves. So one of the major elements in the design of the master plan was the uh, consideration for the circulation. This shows you the pedestrian circulation, how it connects into the community, and the yellow shows you the vehicular circulation in the park and around the buildings. And what we try to do is combine the two, integrate them together and make them work together. Whereas typically cars are seen as a negative, we don't see that if it's properly designed. Um, and we'll show you in the detail of the plan as I go through it, some of those components. Uh, one of the other aspects is the secure parking at the back of the public safety building, which is critical for the success of how that operates. And our experts in that area um, from DLR will explain that when they talk about the actual building. And you can see the main pre, the three main buildings, the public safety building, the town hall, and the community center. I'm gonna focus on very quickly, go through the plan and show you some of the highlights. Uh, as I said, it has a very strong environmental aspect to it. We've created this front door by extending uh, 97th Avenue through the site as requested by the town. We've created this environmental front door using retention ponds and natural um, setting. And it's really gonna be a great front door coming from Old Cutler Road to the site and the community center and the uh, uh, town hall. As you can see here, we've even created this sense of a bridge. So it, it creates this gateway into the development. Uh, moving to the east, we have this large open lawn, which is a combination amphitheater and a civic event open space. And that's something that's gonna allow really great visibility from 212th to the site and see the buildings because we know they're tucked back a little ways off Old Cotler, which we thought was the perfect location for them. Moving and then to the entry to the uh, town hall and public safety building, you can see here we have some renderings and aerial on the left and an eye level view. If you look at the landscaping, we've been very careful to make sure it's, it's authentically um, Florida landscaping, very important for long-term maintenance, sustainability, and a variety of things. So we were very careful even in the renderings to make sure it represented native plant material. You can see here access comes in off of 212, the main entry to the project to a grand entrance uh, plaza that enters the uh, town hall and the public safety building. And then you continue to this two level parking uh, structure at the rear of the building, which we thought was really a, a great location on the site because it'll feed the park and the buildings all in a very condensed area on the site. 
Moving to the east even further, we have this large area, and this is part of the Fairchild Gardens Connect to um, Protect program. We, we're gonna create a pine rockland here, and this is the central community space. And we've really designated sort of the rear portion of the site as the community park, community center, as, a, as opposed to the front, which is more the civic portion of the project. And this would be where you have all of your outdoor activities during the day in this large uh, sort of public gathering space here you can see in the rendering. And then immediately to the east of that will be the community center with a swimming pool. It has its own access off of the uh, 212th of the east side, and that will provide access for some par cars parking that are convenient for the community center because we, we think that access is going to be very important. Uh, we're showing here some of the projects we've done. Uh, BNA has done a lot of park projects in South Florida. Um, one of the ones on the upper right there, for example, is Durrell Central Park. We're working on right now, which is an 80 acre uh, central park for the city of Durrell. And with that, um, I'm gonna have the architects for the public safety building, which is um, Jake from DLR, and James will present the uh, town hall from uh, BNA. Thank you, Randy. As you can see, uh, we were very strategic in placing uh, both of these buildings on site, central portion of, of the site adjacent to the parking. Um, but let's get into the building first. The intent here is we have seen and we've studied every component from view angles, traffic, uh, sustainability, orientation. And what we really want to accentuate here is a sense of place, a connection to the community, a connection to the residential area, and in doing so, keeping up with the sustainability and, and providing a very different, uh, iconic uh, building within the, the, the town of Cutler Bay and within the, the park itself. It was It's very important to connect the building itself, the town hall, to the rest of the park. So very, very clearly, our strategy was to place a parking garage on the north side. Why? We wanted to be able to give back the sustainability portion, right? We wanted to give back uh, to the park and have as little surface parking area as possible. Number two, the placement of those two buildings is very, very critical for the uh, approach from the users to the buildings themselves. And so um, it, it, in, indicated in yellow, we can see how you approach both of those buildings. But to gel everything together, we have this plaza on the south side. This plaza really brings together both of those buildings um, to make it a very very iconic um, building and design. Very quickly, we understand that we're going to talk. We're going to have conversations with your stakeholders uh, to make sure that you know they get what they want in terms of the floor plan. But basically, on the ground floor, we're going to have the public areas, and then on the second floor, we're going to have um, your offices and uh, most of your departments uh, accordingly. But more importantly, we wanted to give the building a sense of approach, right? We want the, the community, we want the, the users of this facility to be able to take a look at and experience an enhanced uh, uh, visual and experience as they move forward into the building itself. There are a couple of examples of uh, current uh, uh, current work, uh, Doral, Pompano Beach, we're currently working in Deerfield Beach for the community center uh, and some municipal uh, work. Uh, uh, Jake will be pro uh, looking into and providing you information on the public safety building. Terrific, thank you. Well, thank you and good evening. Uh, talking about the public safety building, one of the things that we're really excited about here is that there is a customer service nexus on this site between the, the town hall and the police station. Anyone who's coming there to do city business, town business, is able to do that right there. They're able to do that. And at the same time, keeping security and protocols sort of working. One of the things that's happening right now in the world of public safety is that connection to the community is super important. This is a shaded plaza that allows for connection, those things to happen. And as James talked about, there's an easy sort of understood front and back to this facility. Um, we're locating it at this nexus point, this meeting point at the turning circle. The parking for police is actually behind the building at the surface level, but they have the ability to exit out toward the top or out toward the side. Two ways in and out is a best practice in that area. 
And uh, the, the notion of movement on the site is really important, but we're also hiding the cars. We're hiding the cars in a way that works with the function, but is very sort of real in terms of how that works. A lot of the operation spaces, the public spaces are on the first floor. So when we talk about that customer service nexus, there's a front door, there's a welcome mat that's rolled out to the citizens of Cutler Bay. There is an opportunity for those kind of secure spaces that uh, complement uh, patrol, uh, your evidence movements and so forth. There's We're always setting up a patrol triangle that we try to indicate on that level. And on the second floor, a lot of what we introduced was an idea called resilience over openness. And resilience over openness protects the secure spaces from existential concerns of sea level rise. It protects them against man-made threats. But it also sets up a very friendly facility because that connection is important. The other thing that's important is creating a sense of recruitment and retention because law enforcement is going through an all-time issue with recruitment and retention. That's true here in Cutler Bay as it is in Miami, as it is a lot of other places. And so making that environment and making the two buildings work together, but having their own distinct and unique personalities. So that's a very real thing. But when we talk about resilience, it's not just the resiliency of the facility, it's the resiliency of the site. It's, it's all of that. And that's a big part of the facilities that we do. I'm very proud to say that I lead our design group for DLR Group. We're a large organization with 30 plus offices. We've worked all over the country on award-winning projects. Um, but these projects synthesize these issues of customer service, wellness, recruitment and retention. They do those things in a way that's been recognized by a number of individuals. So talking about resilience in the community center. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, my hand was back. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, so let's let's go away from our civic civic component, which is the, both the, the town center and the safety building. And let's now go into fun community center, a place that is located on the eastern portion of the site. We wanted to make it closer to the neighborhood. We wanted to make it fun. We still wanted to be able to have architecturally uh, the connection between uh, the, 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 the overall project itself. But again, this is a focus for the community to lounge, to be able to have events, fitness, anything. We wanted to make it very, very, very fun for the community itself. Obviously, the building itself connects to the park, connects to the pool. And again, floor plan wise, use wise, we want to be able to provide you with enough flexibility within the footprint to be able to have various events, uh, to be able to collapse some of these partitions between these uh, programs to be able to have uh, uh, large events, but still be able to open up into the pool area um, accordingly and make the building one with the exterior. And so we think this is a, a winner as well. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass it on to Carmen, our sustainable. Thanks, James. Um, so our resiliency approach focuses on six strategies that align with the town's um, green master plan. Um, so with regards to our sustainable energy efficient design, um, we're going to be um, pursuing the platinum LEED certification, and we're going to be using strategies like orienting the building in the optimal direction to reduce the energy demand and optimize solar production. We're also going to be looking at our systems, the lighting system, the HVAC systems, and looking for highly efficient systems that consume less um, electricity and also use smart controls that basically are going to only use those resources or those uh, drive on that demand when it's needed. We're going to also be looking at a highly efficient building envelope technologies that basically um, that includes things like low emissivity um, glass, um, reflective walls, um, and basically shades that um, reduce the amount of glare and the amount of um, heat um, that is in the um, building. Um, we're also going to be look at, looking at reducing heat island effects throughout the site. Um, and the way we do this is through extensive um, shade uh, trees and landscaping. 
using high albedo material um, and sidewalks and asphalt and all of that. So basically we're not absorbing that heat, but actually reflecting a lot of it. And then using a similar strategy for our green, uh, for our for our roofs, so basically reflective roofs or green roofs that basically don't have as much heat gain. Um, Regarding renewable energy sources, we're going to be looking at renewable um, energy generation and net zero strategies throughout the site comprehensively. Um, and I'll just mention one of the, there's many strategies that we can use there, but I'll just mention one, which is some um, battery storage, because it has an added benefit, which is it provides more reliability. So in case there's a power outage, you can um, operate your building or partially operate your building without the need of a generator. Um, green storm water management. So we have used uh, very successfully in many projects, green storm water management practices. And what that means is we wanna capture the water where it falls. So basically we're minimizing that storm water runoff. Um, basically trying to replicate the natural water cycle. So strategies that we use for that is we use um, um, pervious material that allows the water to percolate. We use green roofs that capture some of that water and basically the, the plant material sucks some of that water up. We strategically place rain gardens in bioswale so they can take that runoff and do the first layer of um, treatment of that water. And then finally, it ends up the, in the stormwater system or the retention pumps within the site. And so we'll have strategies also like reducing water demand and smart irrigation. So we use some um, water saving fixtures. We'll use native plants that require less water and we'll be very specific about where we place them where, um, you know, in high places we might place um, material that is more drought resistant as opposed to in our rain gardens or um, bioswales where we have flood resistant um, material. We'll use rain sensors so we're not irrigating where it's not needed. And we'll have, we'll use storm water um, for irrigation toilets and things of that kind. And then finally, I want to touch upon something that Randy um, spoke um, earlier, which is we were very careful about the circulation in our site because um, basically we want to make sure that it's inviting to all. So we basically connected to all Cutler Road on the west side and we created welcoming um, entrances and intuitive pathways. We're also creating a shared use path in 212. Um, to basically make sure that we're inviting all forms of modal, multimodal transportation into it. So if you want to come in a scooter, you want to come in your golf cart, you want to come biking, pedestrian, vehicle, it's all going to be welcome here. We also want to take advantage of the um, circulator, which is very close to this site, and work with the town to figure out the best location for a stop and create a safe um, crosswalk to basically connect. This is, this is a project that is meant for the town, and we want to make sure that everybody feels welcome and is using it. So I'll pass it on to our project manager, George Ferrer. Good evening. Uh, my name is George Ferrer. I'll be the project manager for this project. Uh, tonight, I'll be discussing the schedule and the budget, both which are critical to the success of this project. Uh, the design phases uh, of the project will be performed in 11 months. I believe you had 12 months as a requirement. We can do that in 11. Uh, with public involvement meetings uh, in the first three phases, we will continue and build upon the town's previous community involvement efforts using technology to provide the most inclusive engagement with the community. The schedule that you see here is basically a traditional design bid build uh, delivery method. So what can we do to go ahead and reduce this schedule? Well, we can go ahead and use a CM at risk uh, who will expedite the process and assist with aligning the project budget. Uh, we can also issue design packages so to expedite the pricing process. By the way, both of these processes we're very familiar with and we've done uh, through other history of our firm. Uh, we are well aware of your $37 million budget. We're also aware of the efforts from Wolper Gavarez with the estimate that they provided. We have to verify all of this as we're going through our process uh, with the programming and concepts that we're gonna have for this project that we will work with you on. Uh, during the design phase, we'll work with you to establish your priorities. This project is about you and for the community, so we want to make sure we get all your priorities in line, get as much of it as we can into the project. Uh, and But we got to make sure we stay within the budget. Why us? Well, we have an exceptional team of experts providing creative design solutions, as you've seen by some of the, the, the renderings we've provided today. 
with a record of proven ability to deliver projects on time and within budget. We also wanna remind you that we are local. We are a locally based firm here in Miami-Dade County, as are the majority of our consultants with longstanding relationships with the local AHS agencies having jurisdiction. What this means is we know people, we can move things faster. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, we were asked if we could, uh, we should ask permission. We have a printout of the presentation. We'd like to leave as a leave behind. So when you eventually do, you've got them already. Oh, no, no, these. Well, we, have bigger ones. we have bigger ones. So you can see a little bit bigger. <laughs> Thank you very much. I guess. All right. Well, it's a lot of information we just gave you. <laughs> That's why I don't sit in front of the class anymore. <laughs> um, not a lot. Not a lot of questions, just just some thoughts and concerns, just based on um, working on various parts of this concept for for quite some time. Um, in, in in just reviewing the the, the site plan, um, and don't get me wrong, a lot of this is is excellent stuff, very very good, very detailed. Did read it. One of the things that does concern me is that the uh, traffic that runs through the park. Right, we have you know you, the the circulation through there that concerns me. Um, golf carts, people, cars, they just don't mix, right? And you're putting in a two lane road, obviously, I guess for you know uh, two way traffic. It, 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 in in just roughly reviewing it, it it that just poses some questions, right? Some concerns if you get cars, golf carts, and people on on there at the same time. It also adds a lot of additional asphalt that we were looking to try to take, you know, out of out of out of the park. Um, another observation is one of the things that we'd really looked at in 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 uh, from a preliminary standpoint of, of this project was really having a police station that was closer to a main road, right, where the access for the police vehicles um, are a much shorter and direct access onto a main road. Um, although I like, you know, the concept of the way it is, I just don't, in what I see here, I, I just don't see the, it, it looks to me that the police cars have to go through a lot of different ways, the garage to get, get to the outside. If so. I, if I may, uh, we have two accesses for the police cars. We have the main access through the main entrance and we have a rear exit access that empties out onto that road that runs right alongside the public's property and us. So they don't have to go. That's a secured access to the police area only, not for public use, only for the police to use to get in and out quickly without having to go through the park. Yeah. Gotcha. I don't see it, but yeah, I'll take your word for it. Um, the, the community center the pool, there's not enough parking around the pool, right? And that's one of the things we struggle with right now with our current pool is, is we don't have enough parking for the programming that we put at that pool. You put swim teams in there, you, you know, you put a recreational and, you know, we can fill up that parking lot in no time. So one of the ideas was being able to utilize the garage to alleviate a lot of that additional parking that may have been may have been around the 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 pool um we do have i don't know if you were privy to it we certainly could probably make it available to you uh we do have specific specs or more detailed specs on the pool in, in around a specific uh programming that we do right specifies a, a certain design certain amount of swim lanes that it can we can utilize to be able to um teach uh scuba lifeguard training you know, and those different things. So I, I'm sure this is flexible, but again, just looking at the pool, it looked really a lot more recreational than it did what our, our concept was in the recommendation that came out of the parks committee. Um, so you guys are, they did inform you, right? That this has to be cat five rated, right? Okay. Perfect. And the only, the only other thing is just a comment. I'm sure we could provide information later on 
I'm, I'm just, I would just like to know more about how you maintenance green roofs. It just, I mean, I, I see that concept and everything, but you know, I just don't see a maintenance guy up there with a lawnmower. So <laughs> learn more about that. But other than that, uh, really appreciate your your uh, efforts and a great design. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Lurk. Hi, um, I, I like this very much. Very nice work. Um, I'm going to concur with our vice mayor and looking at the the rendering of the parking around the the pool area. Mm -hmm. I, I counted 11 parking spots. So, uh, I mean, maybe I'm not seeing seeing or if there's another slide with more parking spots. Yeah, there, I, I believe there's around 35, 35. Um, and we actually took some, there's room for more. Okay. We thought, well, let's not overkill the parking, but it, there is definitely room along that roadway, which we only put parking on one side. We could easily put parking on the other side and double the parking down in that area where the pool is. So the other thing is the pool side of the building and put it further into the site and with more parking around it if it's that intensive use is immediately at the pool but we assume that people would go through the building to get into the pool anyways so the the service of the building is more important actually than the pool because you'd be going through the building to get to the pool right. you'd want that control but we could easily add more parking and there is 35 or 40 spaces in that area currently okay, okay. thank you I, I i think like it was mentioned earlier this is our vision with what limited information we received. There's a lot of opportunity here to make sure we communicate with you and get your input on these other items that we don't have. And one of that is the additional parking and how much you think you're gonna be using that pool facility. So we do have it set in for growth if we need it. So we're ready just to meet with you and get going. Councilman Duncan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I, I want to commend you for the the tremendous amount of work that you've put into this proposal. It's uh, it it really is eye hopping, and it's it's a very beautiful design concept. Um, I I mean, I, I would just echo the same sentiments. I know that this is not necessarily the uh, the the proper time to discuss very nitty gritty details about uh, designs, you know, and, and and really narrowing down what that is until we actually have a, a firm selected. Uh, so I understand that, and I and I appreciate uh, the amount of detail, the amount of the the comments, and and a lot of the the feedback from residents, from stakeholders, that you incorporated uh, in your concept. So just thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. With with regards to the comment on the on the pool, currently the project that we're designing at the at the city of Doral, it's it has both a recreational pool and competitive pool. In addition to that, it also has a diving well. And the diving well is the one that meets the requirements for the scuba training, because those are the ones that have the usually 16 to 20 feet in depth. So those are the kind of things. So we have experience in working recreational, uh, competitive, as well as diving pools, which are, again are the ones that would be accommodating for the uh, scuba type training. So. I, I just want to touch on the circulation because that was such an important part for us. Um, figuring out where we could get into the site was critical. There's very limited access because of the medians and all the roadways. And especially if you consider 97th may have a median going in, very difficult to just put cuts anywhere in the median. So we worked with our traffic people and looked at the location of the entry as being the most efficient, about four or 500 feet from the intersection with old cut or from uh, 212th and 97th put the entrance there. And what we did was most of the traffic goes to the garage and the two buildings, and they really don't go through the park. So there's that short connection that we had to get into the site. And then the other parking, this is the community center, and it won't really be a shortcut because that other entrance is not as efficient as the main entrance. So we don't see people coming, driving around the park to get to the parking facility because it would be easier just to come to the main door. So we really paid a lot of attention to, and as far as the interconnection of pedestrians and vehicles and golf carts, we made very wide walkways and a lot of them, if you saw the, the pedestrian circulation, you could easily designate some of the walk, some of the pathways for cart, for carts or for golf carts, and then have that separation of both pedestrians, golf carts, bicycles and pedestrians and vehicles. Thank you. Catherine Ramirez. <clears throat> First off, very good job. Very nice presentation. I like the way that this looks. I have a couple of things I want to ask. Um, for vehicle traffic, you're coming in off of 97 to 212. You have two entrances into 
what would be the main portion of the the property. I don't see anything on the backside between us and Publix to number one, you know, have access to um, the, the buildings and stuff, making it easier for people to get in and out. I'm very happy with the secured entrance for police. I think that should be, you know, they said you're specific for police and that's it. And I agree. Um, and the other thing I'll just put it on up, then you can just put, uh, if we were to go with the, the wood facade, what is the maintenance on, on something of that I'm nature? And since we brought it up about the roof, I'd like to see what, you know, how, to, how do we maintain that? So it doesn't look deteriorated by the, by the sun after a short period of time. Let me address the access issue. One of the reasons we placed the road along the north side and away from 212 is that allowed us the opportunity to connect into that parking lot and Publix wherever we wanted to, including down the community center or adjacent to the entry of the parking garage. We didn't know how much access we would have there, so we felt that the police on the plan at the far north end or the north West corner of the garage is there. There could be easily another entry if that's permitted. We, we really weren't sure of what access we had on that road other than it could be used for access. So I think that that's a possibility, especially with the road being so close to that uh, existing road that you could easily connect in several places if it was felt necessary to do so. Anything else? Okay, as it, as it relates to the finish on the building, right? You talk about the wood finish. The wood finish, we have different types of materials that we can use. We can use a veneered uh, finish. We can have a composite finish. And so nowadays with the new technologies, there there is coverage that we can put on that material to have, it, have a longer life cycle. And so maintenance-wise, it should be able to resist, you know, a 20-year typical roof slash uh, facade uh, situation. All right. <clears throat> you know, one of the things I do like about this is is the parking garage. I do like the, uh, the idea of reducing the you know the asphalt being spread out rather than going more vertical. Um, and I, I certainly understand uh, Councilman Callahan's position on the roadways, but quite honestly, I, I think it, it is on the exterior on it, um, and I don't see a lot of people crossing back and forth. There's only one really green space where you'd be, have to cross that that area. And you do need to move around the park. It's rather a large park. <clears throat> um, so I don't really have an issue with that. You know, I was hoping for more. You know, we have some uh, stores uh, that are Publix. We have another uh, three acres, which is just to the west of this, um, which we're hoping for development of restaurants, cafes, kind of things like that. So, you know, that I was hoping to see a little bit more of an access from the cafes, restaurants around the park to be quite honest, to be a part of it. Um, you know, uh, provide some type of commercial uh, food, drink, entertainment uh, to be a part of the park. So that, that's that's the only thing that I was, I was uh, wanting to see. Um, community center, uh, you know, I see a lot, a lot of room for, for classrooms. Actually, a lot of classrooms. I know it's these things kind of being changed, but my concept was a community center where you could actually, you know, have a, a larger event. Uh, you know, we often have uh, entertain here uh, for our town hall, a uh, state of the town address, those type of things, an area where you can have a larger group, which is indoors, almost like a, you know, not like a banquet hall, but, you know, similar to that uh, where it could be used by not only the town, but by the community as well. Um, like the, uh, the, the vegetation I like um, is, I'm just wondering whether it's, it sounds bad to say, but where, where, where do you find a balance between open open space, which is usable by people, uh, and and vegetation, which is natural to the area? So, just I wonder if you had a comment on that. Um, you know, grass is really nice to go out and sit on and lay in the, in the spring and the fall here in Florida, but it's very high maintenance, high water demand. Uh, it, it is a it is a balance. We we tried to show large open spaces that would be flexible for a lot of different things. Um, and, you know, the plan shows a lot of tree canopy. That doesn't mean there's not a lot of areas underneath that for recreation, throwing a Frisbee, things like that. We didn't put any sports fields. You know, it's basically picnic areas, playgrounds, interpretive for the, the whole Pine Rocklands program, the environmental of the wetlands being used from the retention pond. So it is a balance. 
But I think you know, we've done a lot of parks and we like to activate the park with both places for people and landscaping that you can enjoy the setting. So it, it's a balance that needs to be worked out. But maintenance is such a critical issue in parks. You know, they all look great the first day you open them. And then about five years later, it's like, wow, we can't afford to maintain this. Right. You know, we love to put shrubs and ground cover everywhere, which then everybody tramples and is getting, it dies. So it, it's it's a challenge and it's something we'd be very um consider very highly in the process of developing a landscape plan that you can maintain and then you can afford to keep it up so and in this uh, amphitheater that's it's kind of hard to tell but i'm assuming it'd be a covered amphitheater facing the the green i'm area. sorry the amphitheater uh, we we didn't do any detailed design on it but we we proposed something that would be actually like a, a shell um bandstand or you know a stage with some kind of canopy on it um the problem with those a lot of times they're not used that much you know they're they're open most of the time so we wanted a flexible space that you could have uh, art show on that lawn you could do a lot of things so we didn't create a sloped amphitheater it's a flat lawn with a raised stage so you have maximum opportunity you could have car shows there you could do all kinds of things with stabilized surface and things like that so a lot of flexibility even a farmer's market <laughs> all right any other questions from the council? No. Thank you very much for your presentation. I do appreciate it. Again, exciting stuff. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. All right. We'll bring the next one in. You guys want to take a two minute break if you need anything to, while will they shuffle in and out? You're more than welcome to. <laughs> Banning snacks for the dietary. How much you want to bet when it comes back with a handful of snacks? And then I bet when we turn to the motion. And listen, when all I hear is. And it just looks bad. It looks I don't like this. I'm half listening to you because I'm going to eat my Pringles. <laughs> Okay. Just look down right now. Okay. Yeah. Man and Craig. Okay. We have another.
We'll just wait for Councilman Ramirez to come and join us and we'll get going. He is here. Are you guys ready to go? No. Oh, that's not that problem. Let me take this opportunity um, while we're waiting to welcome our newest member to Cutler Bay and say congratulations to one of our oh, had a brand new baby. Is that correct, Mitch? That is. Uh, Lucia was born on Saturday. And uh, I will pass around a picture on my phone. <laughs> we we just got back from Tallahassee and Ralph showed it to us uh, while we're waiting for our flight. So oh, adorable. Yeah. So uh, congratulations to Roger and his family. I'll pass that on. Register her to vote anytime. <laughs> <laughs> You guys see an ongoing theme here? What's that? <laughs> you see an ongoing theme waiting for <laughs> Rick? Yeah. He thought we were done for the night. Anyway, oh no. <laughs> cool. All right, we are ready to go. All right, you're on. Well, great. Can we have the presentation? Oh. oh. Great, thank you. So uh, good evening. Uh, we're MC Harry and Associates, making sure this works. <laughs> Aha. Uh, uh, thank you for inviting us uh, this evening to uh, talk to you about our, our qualifications on your design services project for the Legacy Park and Municipal Complex. We are MC Harry and Associates. And for the next few minutes, I wanna to talk to you about our unique qualifications, our approach and methods, our understanding of the project requirements and our past experience with uh, clients. So uh, unique qualifications. We've been in practice for more than 65 years. Uh, we've been serving public sector clients like you uh, since for at least another 40, um, well, not another 40, part of that 40. Uh, we have uh, 60, about 28, uh, 30 students, including our part-time students. And, and we're proud uh, of serving um, uh, uh, serving uh, small and uh, small and large projects for clients like yourself. Uh, as I said, municipal clients is really our bread and butter. 95% uh, of our work is um, municipal project public clients, uh, whether it's your neighbors to the north, village of Pinecrest, or the city of Miami or Miami Beach. Uh, this is what we do for, for a living. We've dedicated our careers to that. And the type of projects that we have uh, are reflective of your project itself. We have recreation centers, we have playgrounds, we have shelters, we have fire stations, police stations, public safety complex, uh, master planning, uh, envisioning all of the, all the elements that you will need to make this a successful project. Sustainability is very important to us, as it is to you, and we have um, most half of our staff are LEED certified uh, staff members, as well as we have a series of projects that have achieved anything from uh, LEED certified. In fact, the uh, Coral Reef Park in, in Village of Palmetto Bay, I believe, was one of the first ones in the county to get certified many years ago, uh, and up to Platinum and the city, uh, uh, city of Key West uh, City Hall. And we have two, one, 
two currently, one in design and one in construction that are tracking for silver. Uh, we're very proud of, of the accolades that we get from our peers, whether it's design awards or being uh, assigned the award of firm of the year from the American Institute of Architects. My name is Lourdes Solera and I'm principal at MC Harry. And this is my business partner, Craig Akar. Uh, and uh, with, uh, with us, I have several staff members that I'll introduce you, but I wanna point out that we are very proud of our diversity. We reflect the type of community that Miami-Dade County is. Uh, we have 75% of our staff uh, have a variety of diversity, whether it's from different countries or from different uh, cultural backgrounds, all those kind of things. So we reflect that our people and we empower our staff because we reflect what, a, what uh, Miami-Dade County is. So with me today, I have um, Lee Feinberg, and when I call your name, you can wave. Uh, he will be our senior project manager, and uh, he's been with us for uh, about 20 years. Uh, give or take, you might not want to know that amount of numbers. <laughs> uh, Chris, Chris Cooley, uh, who is going to be our project manager, has been with us also, and they have spent a lot of their time working with municipal clients. We also have uh, Juan Corredor, who's our, um, our 3D guru, and you will enjoy some of the things that he did for us. Uh, but back in the office, normally I would say they're back in the office working, but since it's past five o'clock, they're actually home. Uh, we have, or maybe watching us, we have a cadre of staff that is ready with experience, knowledge, and enthusiasm to, to work with you and work on this project. Our team of subconsultants are the best that South Florida can offer, and we have been partnering and collaborating with them for decades, some of them. Uh, for landscaping and civil and traffic, we have Keith, and with us today we have Kelly Schuler and uh, Mark Castano. For structural engineering and parking consultant, we have TRC, we have Nitin Panadivi, and I'm sure I didn't pronounce it correctly, I apologize. And uh, probably one of our longest serving collaborator, almost family member, is Ernie Aloma with SDM. Uh, so we also have other subconsultants that will uh, play parts on the different things that are needed for this project, be, it, be acoustical considerations. We have Ed Duggar and Associates uh, for lead uh, and sustainability items. We have energy uh, buildings and for resiliency, we have Brizaga. And then of course, if for the pool that you uh, want, we have an aqua aquatic design engineering, which is aqua dynamics, who we've been working with before. So now I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about the projects that we presenting to you that actually have a, a correlation to the type of project that you you want to have you uh, this is a key west city hall uh historic property that actually we rebuilt the whole thing in itself uh it is to both now the city hall but it's also the emergency management center um but it, this is a lead sort of platinum certified building and we applied all the design strategies that you need to address to address sustainability and lead credits in essence deal with climate change human health water resources, biodiversity, green economy, and community. Those, when you look at the checklist of what you need, and this is the kind of things that uh, Cutler Bay is very interested. You guys, uh, uh, as a as a community is very involved in the environmental, really understand the value of that. And so we would bring our expertise to that. This is a uh, Southridge uh, Aquatic Center, uh, South of Miami Dade, uh, roughly where the, the Southwest Senior High School is. And this is uh, going to go out to bid. And this is uh, like your community center uh, goals. Uh, this is about engaging the community. It will be a pool that actually will be used by the high school next door. So we had to uh, deal, uh, address those interests for from both the community, whether it's having fitness functions, uh, multi-purpose rooms for activities, and they wanted a splash pad. So those, those stakeholder meetings are very important to really understand the functions and the needs that you each want for all your project. This is a small community center we did for the town of Royal Oaks, a small uh, community in, in North uh, Dade, but it's very much about creating a, a, a hub. Uh, this is what you want uh, your legacy park to be, sort of the iconic soul of Cutler Bay, the hub, this is a small community that needed the same thing. Similar here in South Miami, Mary Park Community Center, located in a residential part of South Miami that certainly needed uh, the, the, the community involvement. In this case, they have active activities in that community center. They have a basketball board and a com computer area things. Uh, this is a, a project that is very, very relevant in terms of site considerations. This is Dinner Key uh, City of Miami Dock Master Building uh, right there in Coconut Grove. Uh, you can get a more uh, delicate location that you want it because, of course, you have to deal with hurricanes, flooding, uh, all the things that, that we have to address 
regardless of where we are in this county, but certainly when you're next to the bay, it's even more important. Uh, so we had to ad address elevated flooding. We uh, This building actually became the emergency operations center during Hurricane Irma. It had really no damage, so it was fantastic and had just been open maybe two years before. This project is probably the closest one to yours, uh, happens to be the town of Davie, Governor Leroy Collins Farm Park. And the image you see on the top, is our 3D model uh, that we made from our 3D uh, uh, printer. So we, we certainly want to use the technologies to, to give you a sense of what this building is going to look like. On the bottom, you see the renderings. This is about you know uh, buying into the design of the project before it's ever built. So we use all the tools available to us and this particular site is 48 acres of undeveloped land. You're 16, so obviously a little bit bigger, but it's really the same goal. This is going to be the hub, the, the soul of the town of Davie. Obviously, Davie has uh, equestrian amenities requests, so they have a farm stable and they have a rodeo. Obviously, you're not looking for that, but it's really the goal. This has become the community building. Uh, we had to do wetland mitigations. You uh, uh, potentially your site may have maybe brownfield. So what are the things that relate to that? So you, you bring that sense of, of public agency. Uh, and then this last one is on Brister Park uh, in the city of Miami. Uh, again, very much a, a brownfield site in the middle of a community. We, we spend a lot of time talking to, to the neighbors to see what things they want it. Uh, so our approach and methods after 60 years, we've probably come up with every option there is out there. And I can summarize it in three words schedule, budget, and scope. You got to manage all of those through uh, good communication and you've got it from the beginning to end, program verification, design, all the way to, to project. You have to constantly stay on top of the schedule, the budget, and the scope. And we always like to begin all of our projects getting you involved, right? So what is the consensus? What is it the neighbors want versus what staff wants? What's the, the, those kind of things? Uh, your schedule, you've identified uh, potentially wanting to have this build quickly. I mean, this is part of your, your plan. We took the liberty of assuming some options so uh, it would be about 12 months of design, uh, permit and bidding, it can be anywhere from six to 12 months, depending on, on the permitting agency, which can always be fun, uh, and then construction anywhere from 20 to 24 months. We take the time to obviously analyze all of the code requirements. This is a building that has to address all of the things to make it the three buildings or the three uh, uses you've identified need to be uh, part of the code compliance. And so obviously the permitting, we want to know, start that right away so that we don't find out things at the end. And ultimately, we also need to use your guidelines, right? You've done a fabulous job through all those community meetings and your executive summary really capturing what the community wants. Obviously, that's the first step. We can do more of that. Uh, you have a, a growth management plan. You got a green master plan. This is an opportunity to continue those goals that you have and all these other projects into this project. And cost, uh, my favorite topic, they sometimes call me the budget police. It's integral to uh, the design process. From day one, we start looking what is the scope? How much is it going to cost? We don't wait until the end to price it because that's a surprise uh, that you might not like the number. So we certainly from day one and our managers, are, our, our staff is required to do that. And we're all the way through the design process, the construction. We highly recommend the city consider doing using the CM at risk process because this allows uh, them to be involved from the beginning. They can start validating those costs, those design solutions. And we always build right through it. And now Craig's going to spend a little bit of time talking about what we think the design, and these are just concepts of what your project can be. Thank you, Lourdes. So the 16 acre Le uh, uh, Legacy Park and Municipal Complex will be the heart and soul of Cutler Bay and its uh, 40,000 residents. Uh, we understand your construction budget is 37 million and that the project will uh, take place within a five year period. Uh, it is the goal of the town to uh, have this complex be a LEED Platinum certified project, which means the implementation of sustainable and resilience design strategy as an integral part of the design process. So your site is located along Old Cutler and uh, at the intersection of Southwest 212th Street. It borders on the north by the shops of Cutler Bay, uh, on the east by residences and also on the south by uh, residences as well. 
your program calls for the continuation of Southwest 97th Avenue, which really means uh, uh, extending uh, that avenue um, from uh, 212th Street to the existing traffic circle. This gives a great opportunity to have a really grand entrance to the municipal uh, complex. Uh, we recommend that traffic calming design features be used along 212th Street, similarly to what you have done along Old Cutler, which has been pretty successful. We suggest also that parking be placed along the northern and eastern boundaries perimeter of the site. Uh, if, if a parking structure is desired uh, along the northern portion of the site is also recommended. Of course, to navigate a lushly landscape legacy park, the, we recommend the formation of pedestrian circulation in a very organic uh, way. Uh, also to enhance the landscaping, we suggest undulating the topography, forming uh, dry and wet retention areas that will become an integral part of the landscape feature. The structures within the park itself we highly recommend uh, a design concept that creates a kind of pavilion in the park uh, uh, design idea with the town hall being prominently featured along Old Cutler Road uh, to um, welcome citizens and to give them direct access to the town hall. The community center and the amphitheater uh, will be in the center of the legacy park and the police station will anchor the park uh, along the east. Uh, we'll implement design strategies to encourage charging and, and parking of electric vehicles on site, as well as um, integrate your golf cart activities um, as well as providing accessible parking adjacent and near to these buildings. And of course, right throughout the entire park, there will be lots of opportunities for art in public places. The uh, designs that you're about to see are again conceptual in nature. And the design concept here is about pavilion in the park. In other words, uh, finding these buildings within a, a, a rich and, and lushly landscaped park area, almost as if there were organs within a living body of the project. The town hall, again, prominent, uh, a, a landmark, if you will, right at the very entrance to the complex, uh, uh, creating this landmark, if you will, along Old Cutler. And again, though these buildings may be prominent, it is important to understand that, uh, you know, they are a representation, a design, an architectural expression that uh, is really uh, reinforced concrete with steel and glass, having this uh, conversation between the interior uh, architecture and the lush environment of a park that is uh, nicely landscaped. The community center and aquatic center, uh, again, are buildings, pavilions within the park idea. You can see the amphitheater in the background here, but uh, these buildings are placed within lush landscaped area with an interaction of inside and outside. The amphitheater forming this kind of communal gathering entertainment area for your community would be like, you know, discovering this special place within the forest. And your police station, which will be anchoring the eastern portion of the site, will be designed with very strong community-oriented um, design principles and philosophies, allowing the public to feel welcome and an integral part of your police um, here, while at the same time having the programs that, in, that is involved within a police station be kept within the building envelope in a very secured manner. Thank you, Craig. And, and as he 
said this is really just conceptual this is just a vision we would certainly need your input to finalize that so there's really you know it's nothing set in stone we will certainly uh, 3d model it 3d build it so that you laser print it so you can really uh, get a sense of what that is because our goal is to have a satisfying client uh 95 of our clients are repeat clients as a matter of fact and they tell us that one of the things they enjoy working about us is that we give them creative solutions we give them the resources to solve the project with Within the budget, within the scope, and within the schedule they want, uh, by really uh, providing a sort of a, an efficient methodology, we respond to them. We're always there, available for them. And ultimately, you want a building that the users will enjoy, that the users will certainly uh, be part of. And this is what this this cut, this Cutler Bay uh, Legacy Park is supposed to be. This is the hub of the community. So why pick us, right? So 65 years of providing service to South Florida municipalities like your yourself. We're an award-winning team. We uh, provide effective and efficient solutions for all project types. We only showed you the ones that relate to yours, but we have, you know, a, a big portfolio, a proven approach and methods. You know, again, many years of doing this, we we know what works and what doesn't. Uh, we have a staff and a experience, very flexible to your needs, very diverse. And ultimately, as I said, our goal is to exceed your expectations because we want you to continue to be our client and be a repeat client, so to speak. So uh, I, we strongly believe that our team has the qualifications to deliver this project for you uh, by empowering you and empowering us through the design, empowering the people to make this the iconic hub and soul of Cutler Bay. And with that, uh, thank you for the opportunity. We look forward to working with you and we open it for questions and answers and I get extra time as well. You got some extra time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> if you don't mind, we'd like to ask the design team to just join us. Here. In case you have a question for them. <laughs> I appreciate that. I don't like walking. I like talking. Uh, yeah, so I, I not really questions, more so comments, and and I just do want to say that um, I thank you all for for taking the opportunity to to uh, participate in this process. Uh, I think your design is is gorgeous. I think from a con conceptual standpoint, and and like I said, and this is the conceptual stage. There's nothing really set in stone. It's really a matter of you know having an opportunity to to interact with you all, to meet you, to to learn what types of partners uh, you could be professionally you know, with the rest of us here on the council, with the rest of the town staff. Um, I think some of the things, some of the comments that that um, I have regarding, I do think that, you know, um, we'd probably want to look at, you know, in moving forward, a little bit more of, of layout and how things are are kind of placed throughout the space. I think one of the the items that, that we would be interested in is if the, the police department area the the public safety element was a little more located closer towards the old cutler corridor versus on the back you know so it's really nitpicky things of right. that nature um i do appreciate you you hitting on the the brownfield experience that is a, a brownfield property mm -hmm. as is uh you know a, a lot of that area mm -hmm. obviously um yeah, so I just I, I thank you all for coming out for participating and and giving us the opportunity to to meet you to learn more about you your experience which you you have a vast amount of which is a, always uh, a amazing feat so thank you very much thank you thank you thank you I'm gonna go over to Councilman Ramirez you have any questions sir I think uh, B J touched on pretty much what I was looking at is the you know having the police station opposite of the actual town hall with no according to this concept, I know nothing sense stone, like you said, according to this concept with no quick access if we needed something at the town from the layout. And, the and we could certainly even make it one building, right? We were just thinking in terms of pavilions, you know, how do we, you know, put, you know, these, these little organs in the park, you know, we got sort of enamored of that idea. And obviously it's more cost effective to put as much square footage in one building as you can, right? But then the building becomes much bigger and much bigger footprint. So, but this is a conversation with you as to, you know, what are the best approaches, the best goals, the best, best, best way to solve it. The only other thing is that I, I noticed several things in the actual uh, packet that I was impressed with. So thank, thank you. you very much for taking the time to be part of the process. Thank you. All right, Councilman Lord. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Uh, I too enjoy this concept. I think it's it's quite well done. Um, I appreciate your years of experience. That's very important to us. 
Um, but I also agree with the police station, maybe being too far off the main arterial roads, but uh, I do love your concept. So thank you. Vice Mayor Callahan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, been in the construction business a, a long time, over 30 years. So I really love to look at these projects from a, from a different perspective, you know. Um, I, I like the space plan on, on, on the property. I really do. Um, I, I don't mind the separation of the buildings. Um, I like the relationship of the spaces. Uh, I do like that it's a, you know, that, that your initial presentation was, was a concept, right? So we're thinking from, from, um, a global viewpoint versus, you know, trying to pin, trying to guess what we want, right. And putting, you know, mm -hmm. and, and presenting to us, oh, Hey, yeah, we, yeah, this is what we think you want. You know, this is, I, I, I like the circulation. Um, it seems to hit on, um, a lot of the key, the key things that our, our residents had, had requested of us, you know, over the years. Um, the only thing is that what I would like to have seen is some space relationship planning, right? Um, you know, um, like what does a community center, right? You know, just, a, hey, this much could be a basketball court, this much could be a fitness center, this much could be, right? Mm -hmm. Just so we we get more of an idea of what you were thinking of what might be in, in that. Right. But you know, that's, that's just. And, and it's a, a juggle. Do we want to tell you what you should get, which is really not my job. Uh, you know, so, you know, how do we, how do we balance that? You know? And so you could have, you know, community centers like South Murray park that had a basketball court, but the one South rich doesn't. So it, I don't know, uh, to be honest, I don't know what you want. Right. So, <laughs> Like I said, it's, this right. is the construction guy in me. Right. You know, right. So. Right. I totally get it, but uh, no, very, very, very nice job. I really, really enjoyed this presentation. And, and I think you guys did a great job capturing the space relationship within the 16 acres. The park yeah. itself. Yeah, I want to thank you very much for that comment. Um, there's a very important aspect of the design team here that is missing, which is you. <laughs> <laughs> and the design, uh, the team, you form a very integral part of that. And designing in a vacuum without your input, without your feedback, without your interaction is nothing but concepts at the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, your involvement in the process, you being the very important stakeholder, is extremely important and will shape the design to what it finally is. Uh, the design that you will see here today is not comprehensive because you are not yet there for the interaction back and forth. This is us reading. Um, your requirements and uh, putting our little creative flair on it at the moment, right? Thank you. Um, you know, you don't have a parking garage here. I was wondering what your thought was on that. Yeah, so we believe that the parking garage uh, should be placed along the northern section of the site uh, in the, in the north western portion of the site if there is to be a parking garage. Now, a parking garage was not one of the elements that was asked for, but in reading, we see that that was one of the discussions uh, within the uh, process as well. And, and again, thinking of that park concept, a parking garage feels like a big structure um, that may not give you that uh, uh, organic feel that we were going for. That might be not what you want, but that's kind of what we were going for. But there's certainly space to put it. And, and it would be towards the back, towards the public right. side, so that the face that faces the, the, the neighbors is really the, the green area. The, the I, I have two, two comments on that. You know, asphalt's not very organic either. No, it's not. <laughs> um, and, and in my mind, I'd much rather have a, a smaller footprint going up a little bit. Um, and as far as, you know, disguising parking garages, you know, I've seen some phenomenal jobs lately of, you know, Meisner Park, they, areas like that where they, you don't know it's a parking garage. Right. Uh, there's great ways you can disguise it. Um, but also one of the things that I think I like to see, you know, we have um, some shops that are right across it by, in the Publix area, where they are facing both ways. So you could have cafes, restaurants, the three acre parcel, which is just to the uh, northeast, a uh, northwest section of it as well, mm -hmm. um, is going to be developed with restaurants and those type of things as well. And 
again, having some access to the absolutely park. you know, nothing better than sitting on and having a, a cup of coffee or a cold beer and being able to look at a park is, is a great idea. So my idea is to incorporate the commercial area around it to provide the amenities to the park uh, so people can enjoy both of those things. Um, other than that, I, you know, I don't think I have any other questions. Again, I thank you for your presentation. Any other questions? And no. if we could, we we tweaked it just a little bit. You know, you found a spelling error here, spelling error there. Do you mind if we give you the version you just saw? If you give it to the clerk, we'd appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Like we would certainly appreciate it. Okay. It's almost the same. All right. Just picked a little, you know, you, you know us, we are a little perfectionist. Your time and very appreciate your, your presentation. Thank you for thank you. Forward. Thank you. Thank you for your time thank you and for thank you for inviting us. Right. We look you forward to working minutes. with you. As of the next, okay, three minutes. Thank you. Thank you.
We're ready. Okay, we'll give you a moment to get your presentation. Are you doing PowerPoint or live? Uh, PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Let me know when you're ready there. You're on. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Charles Michelson. I'm principal with Salts Michelson Architects. And on behalf of our team, we thank you for inviting us here this, this evening to make this presentation. This is a legacy project for the town of Cotla Bay, and we're very appreciative to be considered for it. What we're going to do tonight is, is uh, hopefully if the slides turn, is uh, go through who we are as a team, uh, our approach to the project, some design concepts we've developed for the projects, and hopefully after you've heard the presentation, you'll agree that our team warrants your ultimate consideration. Salts Michelson Architects are celebrating 47 years here in uh, South Florida, uh, and we're 33 people strong. We're a mid-sized firm with large-sized firm capabilities, and our motto of global thinking and locally minded it really is appropriate for the project being considered this evening. Our team is really a village. Everybody here will be associated with the project uh, to, to help bring it to fruition. And um, these are all people that we have working relationships on similar projects. Uh, with us tonight are Jose Acosta from Chen Moore and Louis Aguirre from uh, Louis Aguirre and Associates, our MP engineers, and some other team members that I'll introduce in a second. The design effort will be led by Michael Graves' office and EDSA, along with us representing the design team. This is international talent along with a local passion for South Florida. Michael Graves and EDSA are worldwide recognized names and talents and ability. And along with us, we really represent an integrated design team that look forward to having the opportunity of working on your project. Locally, University of Miami graduate, uh, Kona uh, on the board of uh, the Architectural Committee at University of Miami. So you're really dealing with people that know the local environment and what needs to be successful. Now, strategic partnerships for specialized projects are the way of the future. It's not unusual. We work on these type of projects many times. By virtue of technology, Revit, BIM 360, our work product is in the cloud. Everybody has the ability to work on these projects simultaneously in real time. You have the ability to monitor our work in the cloud in real time. The firms working together actually enhances the quality of the projects because it's an extra set of eyes that does quality control as we develop the ideas and concepts. Our entire team is recognized for creative program de delivery, along with personal and experiential solutions. We're committed to delivering the Cutler Bay Town Hall and Legacy Community Park of the future. And being part of the community is very critical to us. So the park that nurtures a connection to the community is one of our primary design goals of this project. Our approach, I wanna congratulate you on the amount of work and research that you've done to get to this point in time. I've designed projects with less than half the information than you've already provided me, but we're gonna be using all the work on the Cutler Bay that you've invested in research. And we're gonna take your Cutler Bay Green Master Plan as the roadmap to our development. We're gonna design a building that's eco-friendly to gather, work, play, and enjoy nature together. Resiliency is an important component of the project as well. High value solutions are more than just strong buildings. It's creating a usable project as a government center after any extreme weather event. And this project needs to serve the town operationally, and it needs to serve the individual residents of the community under any conditions. We're a team that works well together and we play well with others. So our approach to this project, working with you, working with the community, working with the ultimate contractor on this job is through collaboration and positive relationships, clear and communi continuous communication, and our team will spend rigorous attention to detail. Our approach and communication and having stakeholder engagement is critical for the success of the project. Uh, in fact, later on, you'll see we've already gone out and interviewed some of the people in the community and we have a little video that we'll be presenting as part of our initial work. 
but we've done this before on other large important projects and we look forward to bringing that experience to you. Part of this is also how we're gonna deliver this project, build a building within budget and then have it constructed. We work with different mechanisms of, of delivery. So we work with hybrid project delivery systems where we do field built and modular construction of building components in a factory brought to the site to help speed up construction. We also design and work with uh, design assist, des uh, design build, where we're able to develop separate site packages, foundation packages and building packages to be able to expedite the construction process and bring this thing home quicker. We've developed the conceptual set schedule for this. We think that the programming and plans can be done within a year. We're allowing three to four months for the bidding, subcontractor bidding, contract to get into place and permitting, and approximately 20 months for construction. Uh, most of that time for construction has to do with supply chain issues. There's a lot of time spent literally waiting for items. And if we're able to engage a contractor earlier in the process, we'll be able to get that part of the work done as expeditiously as possible. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Connor Gray from EDSA. Thank you, Charlie. Good evening. You guys doing all right? All right. You must be really excited. This is, <laughs> this is quite a process. And we are very proud of you for what you've done to get to this point. So again, my name is Kona Gray. I'm a principal with EDSA Incorporated. We're a global design firm. We focus on designing exterior spaces. So I'm a landscape architect by training. And um, anytime we get a chance is committed to the community, makes us smile, makes us very, very happy. So we're super excited to be here. Um, what you're gonna see is um, uh, some concepts here. Now, these concepts are initial, it's something you asked us to look at. And they're based on the feedback that you receive and, and your vision. Um, wonderful visions that are realized are magic. You know, that's when a community can get behind what you're doing and understand that it's really um, essential that you care. And so we want to make sure that what we do is um, go through a very collaborative process. So this is just the beginning. They're not slick, right? These are just images for you to consider as we get through the process. We will design this together, which is really fun. We are also so pleased to see that about 60% of the open space in this design, the land is open. And that means uh, about 9.6 acres is pervious. So water can get back to our wonderful aquifer. And that's really exciting for us. So the plan you're gonna see here is in layers. And the reason why we've layered it like this is so you can see everything. And so what you're seeing in this image initially is your entry, your arrival coming off of Old Cutler on 94th. And what's amazing about that is that we've created this gateway, we've created a drop off, but we've taken the town center, the town hall and placed it front and center the front door. The next thing we did is along that drop off, we've created an area, sort of a portal, a gateway into this um, wonderful uh, legacy park destination. The community center anchors the other side. Between all of that is parking that needs a support. And again, we're using this parking in a manner that allows it to be um, usable for everyone at the park. There's also perimeter parking on the edges for folks that just want to park and go run in the park, for example. From that area, you'll notice that we have created a, a procession, essentially, a sort of a sequence of, of, of events. Um, there is a covered walk. So as as we all know, we need shade in Florida. Um, we created this covered walk that allows you to see all the spaces along the way. You have a pool, we'll have a community garden. We'll also have a splash pad, a wonderful splash pad that will anchor and sort of give, be that knuckle, that connection between the park and all the buildings. And then we also have um, situated along the berm as you go to the north side, viewing opportunities down to a amazing stage um, experience. The police station is also tucked in there. So you have eyes on the park as well. And you have all of these buildings sort of working in conjunction, supporting the park. Um, the park area where you can actually have open events is about an acre, a little bit over an acre. You have the bermed area so you can view um, all sorts of events, but you have all sorts of different spaces where you can move around. And also we've created a linear walk around the park. So you walk around it a couple of times to get a mile. Um, there are little areas where you can see water, you can and really engage with the environment. This next layer is a vegetation layer. And this is really important to us as landscape architects, we love trees. And it's um, really great that we've been able to, to sort of capture this. And you can see here that we're trying to do our best to, to really respect nature and bring as many trees as we possibly can. Um, the history of the site having this um, amazing, um, it was farmland, it was a nursery, has all this wonderful history that's remaining in terms of its 
this uh, natural setting is really special to us. This next slide actually shows you the circulation. So the wider um, sort of uh, uh, arrowed areas are for vehicles. The thinner areas are for pedestrians. You can see we have the boardwalks to show you how you can actually reach out and see the water and touch the water. And we're really trying to, to bring ecology into uh, the forefront. So the layers are the ground layer. You saw the trees layer, and now you see the circulation layer as we work through it. One thing that we think is important is our ecosystem here in Florida. It's really unique. It's special. Um, I spend a lot of time outside. Um, there's this whole concept of forest bathing. Being in nature actually makes you feel better. It makes you healthier. And so we want to encourage that here as well. Um, the hardwood hammocks, as well as the uh, pine lands, are unique to this area that is really, really special. In this transect, you can see how the land goes from those, um, you know, those hardier trees to sort of the softer wetland areas. And that's really our ecology. We should celebrate it. We think it's really important. But the key point I want to make here is that shade is essential at a park. You know, we have open space for you to go and play. Um, actually, there's a, a, a sized soccer field in that space. So you have the opportunity for, um, you know, intermediate play or larger play as well, which is really, really great. And we think that featuring sustainability is super important. So you're going to see bioswales, you're going to see rain gardens, um, everything that um, works to the advantage of nature throughout this process. And these images are really important because they kind of illustrate what we're thinking here. Um, there will be opportunities for movie night, opportunities for the farmer's market, just to stroll. Um, there'll be opportunities to walk around the park and really experience nature and, and hear everything um, in, in that space. And we always try to create a variety of spaces. So there's typically a papa bear space, really large space, mama bear space, which is kind of medium. And then we have several little baby bear spaces all around so that you have all sorts of flexibility in your, in your giving. And then finally, um, we wanted to let you know that we really appreciate the possibility of this going forward in the um, process. Thank you all. As a design partnership, Kona, Charles, his team, and, and ourselves, we absolutely love to design or to tell a story in our designs, to design experiences, experiences as Kona has, has described. But uh, really, the, 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 the premise of all, all of it is, is, while it's ever important for us to design what you want, you want to showcase why you want to do it in the design. You guys have created an incredible why. You've really found your why through enormous research. And I think that was an incredible, of incredible value to us in really coming up with what we wanted to do as, as a premise for design. So an example of, of a story that we wanted to tell, as you see on the screen here, is you've got the Cutler Trail. That's this beautiful trail with coral limestone walls. It's got tree canopy that's shaded and beautiful. And it's, uh, as you see, a lot of it has eroded over time. So we really wanted to take, make this a metaphor for what we could do architecturally in the, in the park to recreate, or to use these canopies as a metaphor for shading and, and beauty and really recall this historic landmark that you guys have here. Really what we wanna do is, is celebrate your community. We see it, we see it in what you've told us and, and how you've engaged with your, your, your population. And you, you celebrate via festivals, you, you have this camaraderie, you really embrace each other and uh, it's, it's a youth, youthfully minded community that really wants to participate in these events and really gather and, and it's all about festival, it's all about celebration. We look at, we call it celebration of camaraderie. I think in, in what we do here, we've, we, I think it's applause to you guys for really wanting to locate the, the police center and police station as part of this triad that you have. And it's great because it, for security purposes, but also community engagement, engagement with the children, and to really create a new stage face for what policing can do and, and how you engage with the community. Creating all these events, these locations, these, these lawns, these fountains, where you guys can come together, celebrate together, and really enjoy the not only your, your immediate families, but the family of your community. And then the, the celebration of of light, we like to say, is an opportunity to really, like at holidays and things like that, to use light, to use projection, which you can do with the various sculpture and things like that that you may have throughout the space. 
that could really be a magical experience. So looking at what you said, you know, how do we set a tone for the future of Cutler Bay? Sustainability. We'll showcase that through some of the, uh, the designs that you see. But uh, an arrival moment. So when you guys arrive, what do you experience? Here's an opportunity to celebrate Cutler Bay to create sculptures that may be reminiscent of these trees with canopies, might be reminiscent of, of the corals. How can you light that up? How can you make that something special and event-driven? Creating a portal to community. So this would be your entrance location where you, which divides the community center and the, uh, the town center. So that, that would be really like centered on with the, uh, your community uh, living room, as you guys like to say. The, uh, all of this sustainability is a focus of what we're trying to do. So the canopies shade both the, your, those like the, they shade the windows, they shade protect you from glare and heat gain, but also a lot of these canopies and the rooftops will have PV cells for, um, again, for environmental wellness. One thing we really wanted to do is create an event. So in the event lawn, we call it Rockland, but the idea that you might have a stage, a performance venue that again can gather and collect the community and host events and movie night concerts, you name it. And then an interactive community park as Kona was explaining with, with interactive fountains, with a pool, with places for respite. And again, it's about celebrating experience. We, we have, um, we have engaged with the community ourselves and, and created a video that really showcases who you are and the story that you guys are trying to tell. So finally, why the SMA team? This project is about you and our design team recognizes that we're in a service business and we wanna make sure that we meet your needs by servicing the community. We think we have the experience and talent specific to your needs. There are lessons we have learned on similar projects that'll provide you with solutions and direction. We are a community driven, passionate design team we want to be able to express ourselves in the project we designed for you. And we're passionate about South Florida. The fact that we have global ability right here in South Florida is a phenomenal opportunity for all the projects that we work on. We're here for you. Your success is our goal. Again, our team graciously thanks you for inviting us here to present tonight. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Shaking it up. I'm going to start off with Councilman Lord. <laughs> Thank you very much for your your concepts. Uh, I find this project to be um, delightful. I, I, I really like what you've shown us. I particularly like the picnic area with the hammocks. I love the branding and the entrance. I think that's that's really great. Um, I don't have, have much to comment because I, I know that this is a concept rather than something written in stone, but um, I'm gonna echo something that we've spoken about with uh, the other projects is um, a parking garage, I think is probably something that I'd like to see, but 
that's all I have. I think this is a great project and I appreciate your time, Sydney. Thank you. Um, we did study a parking garage. The project you see before you is something we can construct for your budget. A parking garage kind of put it over the edge. One of our initial concepts was take the parking that you saw on grade and literally put a plaza on top of it. So it connected the buildings at the second level and truly became the city's living room. Maybe that's something we can plan for an addition in the future. Councilman Ramirez. Uh, thank you for your involvement. Thank you for your presentation. It is nice. Uh, the, I have to echo the same thing about you know the the, the parking garage. Some of the uh, I like the green space areas. I like you know how you set that up and uh, how that was kind of implemented into this. Um, don't see a lot of entrances exits into the into, into the park but again it's just a concept not all be worked out in the in the long run as this is drawing drawing estimates so um nice nice work good presentation uh would have been nice to see myself and uh and ralph on the video but that's okay we'll work on that <laughs> thank you all right councilman duncan thank you mr mayor um yeah i, th I think your presentation i think your conceptual design uh is is magnificent uh i, I really don't have any other <laughs> words for it i think everything uh ties in together with what a lot of the uh, the community and the stakeholders have been uh, kind of demanding from this project and i think with your i guess i want to repeat <laughs> over and over we are this is still very conceptual but i think with what you provided uh and presented excuse me uh us with today uh really kind of checks a lot of those boxes um this is you know this design it, it really for me feels it it has that central park feel to it um with that main event lawn and 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 picnic lawn and and with the pond in the middle uh and and it has a clear distinction between that the park area and the the town hall community center police area now of course you know things can be tweaked here and there uh, and I do love, I do really, uh, it, it took a little bit of time to grow on me, uh, but these, these, uh, these tree sculptures, um, and, and, and hearing you kind of describe them as, as mimicking the shapes of the trees, but also with kind of like a coral type pattern and, and really kind of tying into everything that makes this area of South Florida unique. Um, I, I think that really, really, uh, serves this concept well. And I do want to uh, say thank you and, and and show my my sincerest appreciation for actually uh, having you go out into the community and interviewing residents of of various ages at various locations throughout the community. Um, that's you know that 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 going that extra step just for a conceptual uh, design concept. Uh, I'm very grateful for that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Mayor Callahan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Just like to echo Council Member Duncan's uh, <clears throat> comments on the outreach to the community on this conceptual uh, presentation. It, it does it does show engagement, which is which is important. Um, you know, I guess I'll just start with really the the only criticism you know that I have is um, one thing that we consistently be challenged with in all of our parks is parking, and there's no one that understands probably the cost more of a garage parking garage than me up here on the on the dais, right? I know it's a very expensive element, right? But we can't handicap ourselves with not having the parking that we need when we have events. So the the whole the whole idea, you know, behind being able to purchase 16 acres is have the space to be able to hold events. Our events get bigger and bigger and bigger every year. And we're talking thousands of people, you know, at some of our events and parking is really, really challenging. So just something to to consider. I, I get the budget part of it, but we have to solve the parking in creating a large asphalt parking space is not is not the answer. Um, I really like the the relationships of the buildings. Um, I like the fact that we have a town hall community center. You've you've connected them, 
really like that, you know, um, although, you know, being separate is one thing, but being together is, is another thing, right? Um, the, uh, the police station, you know, uh, being part of that concept and not like, you know, away. I really like the idea how, how you brought in the engagement of the police because that is so in, important for us as well, right? We have we even have a whole section of our police force that's dedicated to community involvement, you know, um, and and you know that's important. We want to continue to have that that involvement. Um, there's a lot of great things going on uh, on here. I like a lot of the of the concept. I mean, the concepts that that you've put in here, the el you know pictures of the elements of movie night, right? Mm -hmm. We've that's something that that we're very fond of. <clears throat> Farmers market, you know, you've you've been able to provide you know pictures of what this space can can actually be. I like really really enjoyed your idea of recapturing the the look along Old Culture Road with yeah. with all of those oaks you know or trees that hit that line the way into the grove and it's something you know like like you said something that that is disappearing right and you know what we could do to to continue to capture that thing but it also ties us into other parts of the community you know so I like that I really like that as well so um Great job. I, I and I also like the fact that you uh you included the statue of the mayor. It's gonna be uh, in the <laughs> really, really appreciate that. So, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, he just gave you guys brownie points. Um, <laughs> um you know, quite honestly, when I first saw that, I'm like, ah, I'm not sure I like it, but the more I like I look at it, the more I like it. Um again, the creating that uh, central uh Entrance way, and the buildings together is is I, I really it's, it's really growing on me. I like because it it's going to create a lot more activity in a smaller space, and mm -hmm. there's more people, there's more life. Um, and, there's, and again, I'm I'm somebody who thinks that we need to enjoy each other each and every opportunity. So that's a great thing. I like the splash pad. That's one of the things because that's quite honestly that's you bring young families out there, yeah. especially when there's an mm -hmm. event out there, um, and it's it's a long hot day. Kids will spend all day and sleep all night because you can just kick them that, that splash pad. Um, I, I'm similar to, to Vice Mayor Callahan's comments. You know, I like the where the parking area is. Um, is kind of because it's it's central. It's not part of the the green space, but it's close to the buildings. I don't like the fact that there is not a, a, a garage there. Um, you know, if it was able to condense that space closer to the buildings and go up instead of spread out be phenomenal and quite honestly then moving the police department on the surrounding the parking garage now the parking garage is basically hidden by the buildings mm -hmm. um gives me a little more green space Good idea. we have property which is uh, going to be developed just to the um northwest corner and we also have the public's facilities right across the street now the the intent was to you know these buildings are facing both sides and the intent was so they can have some open spaces, outdoor cafes, outdoor restaurants, outdoor bars facing the park. So it becomes part of the park. It is a commercial supplement to the park. So you, you can <clears throat> go spend some time. If you want to go get a cold drink, you can go get a cold drink, mm -hmm. um, you know, go to the restaurant. Um, as I'm looking at this, I was making a little notes like, okay, what if, you know, if you take that parking area and tighten it, they yeah. can go up and move the police department closer. Now you have more green space right around where the public's area is and where yes. The, uh, the property is to the northwest, which is a great possibility. This, this is the fun part. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. yes. I, I don't see any and bar, golfing. Golf carts are a big part of the community. I don't see uh, how would you address that issue? Would that just be with the regular parking? Is that what you're? Yeah. Uh, no, we would integrate. We would integrate golf uh, cart parking, um, separate and safer than just intertwining it with the, the parking spaces, along with charging stations, et cetera. If we want to get into that. Well, you know, we work on many projects with a charging station, quite right. honestly. I don't I know if I'm really big on that. <clears throat> if your golf cart make it to the park and back, you know, we're, we're you know, five square mile community, I think. Yeah. It's time to get new batteries if you can't make it to an event and back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're big on us. Hey, let's let's you know save electricity and go to the golf golf cart charging station. So um, the boardwalk around the, uh, the 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 water, is that intended to go all around every or just parts of it? All around. All around it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there'd be no access. I mean, 
ducks animals like that would would they be able to get into it they would be able to get yeah into yeah it? it's three-dimensional so we make sure we have access for animals and, and actually you can see the area where it is open on the on the east side so you have the areas where you can sort of step in but you can walk okay. around yeah yeah i don't, I don't imagine this place going to go swimming just to be clear yeah uh, that's but, correct but usually when there's a barrier between you know a green space and water right you know mines don't i don't like those barriers i like just to the to see the water going directly in. We agree. The intent is to engage the water. Yeah. So, all right. Um, that's all the questions I have. I just want to make sure we've got two minutes past seven o'clock for Mitch's sake. But, um, okay. So, <laughs> so um, any other questions from the council? No. All right. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Very well for, for, thank, for you. Thank, thank you. So appreciate much. it. Okay. All right, folks. So, you have your uh, evaluations and, uh, Again, you don't need to turn those in tonight, and but I do encourage you to complete those, um, and so we, we can have a discussion about this at our, our next council meeting next week, um, and we'll discuss the steps going further at that point. Ralph, anything else, sir? No, um, Mayor, members of council, I just, again, I'd like to thank all top three shortlisted firms. Um, as you can see, you know, um, I also want to thank, um, you know, Desiree, our, our, our former communication director, for developing the specifications, uh, the summary for the, our journey, as, as was mentioned throughout throughout this process, and also um, our selection committee, which was comprised of Alfredo Quintero, our public works director, Jared Munster, our community development director, and Etienne Bejarano, our parks and recreation director. So those folks spent a lot of time studying the qualifications, creating the short list. And as you can see, you know, all three firms are very well qualified. And again, I thank the mayor, members of council. Again, you have the ranking sheets uh, that are there. Any questions that you have uh, from us, myself, Mitch, uh, Emma, we could, you know, get on a Zoom. And again, you, this is a phase that what you're evaluating is based on design concept, 50 points, interview, 40 points, project approach, 10 points. And and very exciting times, as, as, we, as we said before. So we're, we're getting close throughout our journey. So I don't know if Mitch had any other no, they're going. Okay. By the way, as a quick question, do you want us to leave the boards or any uh, um, items behind? They said we have to ask you if you want. Do you have? A, um, we, you already gave us our your your PowerPoint presentation. Do you have something additional, or is that just more copies of it? Copies. Just printed copies. If you could give them to the clerk, and the clerk can distribute to us, I'd appreciate that. Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. With that, folks, our meeting is adjourned.